Good evening, everyone. I hope everyone is well and had a great day in the markets today. Um, I sure had a great day. We have a lot of new faces in Discord. Um, it seems that my Alpine knockoff strategy, or insp I would say inspired strategy, has taken off. Um, and we've got a lot of interest. A lot of people viewed the video. A lot of people are, are requesting to join Discord. So I was a little busy today and it just threw me off my game. So I completely forgot to like trade my, uh, record my session today. Uh, but I started out in the morning. I took the, um, the, you know, the, the mock Alpine scalp, I was calling it. I think we're going to call it the, uh, pre-orb strategy at this point because now that I do know what Alpine strategy is and someone did finally tell me um, it's not really the same thing so what the Alpine trader is doing apparently is taking um, either a long or a short off of the five minute candle at 925 um, and it's basically as simple as as that I think is his strategy I am doing something a little different um, but I guess we're getting to the same place um, I feel like the 15 minute pre-market range is just maybe going to be a little more reliable. So far, you know, I'm two for O, so I'm going to keep testing it and see how it goes. Um, I am going to share that recording of that trade uh, right now. The IB box did, uh, you know, start as scheduled at 9.15, um, so that's working well. I'm just waiting for the open off the cuff. I'm thinking I'm going to set my buy order up. 10 one excuse me 173 10.50 and all things considered right now let's see where we go but i probably um i'll either want to be below 85 or below 80 if we come down a little lower before the actual open and my th my thought is i don't want to get ticked in too early like if we come up to the round number here at 10 and go back down i don't want to get ticked in early and then uh, have a loser the same on the way up so if we tick down to 80 at the round number and go back up and and q likes to go to the round numbers so you know it's just something to be mindful of um i took one the scalp already i think i've got a little system in place for scalps that have uh, that has a high win rate um i'm not going to give the scalp trades as much room as this guy um i think for this guy we're going to give it you know my max pain level is going to be 1250 1300 that range um and the reason for that is I'm not going to bust my account on one to trade. I'm going to uh, get out. And with the premise that if, if this is really as profitable as the Alpine Trader says it is, then, you know, three days of, of trades should make it up. Okay, we have opened. Let me get my guys in order. Okay, I'm gonna go above the box here. Let's see. Since we didn't get up to 10, I'm gonna just do one tick above and below. Of course, I'm in the wrong damn account, but. I tried to make separate accounts, one for scalps and one for the um, ORB strategy, but I have forgotten to change it. So order filled. Let's go. Oh, so close. Target oh, filled. Target filled. Okay. So here's the chart I'm using. Um, I've modified it. A little bit to adapt to micro scalping um, which is like the seven tick scalp that he takes I'm trying to find a really high win rate strategy to use for that um, but let's talk about the uh, the pre orb strategy I'll call it you know because I'm not taking a trade off the open range I'm taking the trade off the pre market open range so the 15, basically the 15 minutes before 9.30. So I have this indicator set to start plotting the range for me at 9.15 and it goes through 9.32. So um, here is the 9.30 candle right here. 
So the range was from 85 to 07. Initially, when I put my stops in here, I was looking to uh, be above 10. So I was at like 1050 and below 85. And the reason was because I'm like a big believer on, you know, round numbers and like numbers that end in five and zero, especially NQ likes to come and test them. So I didn't want to get one of those levels tested and enter me and then go without me in the wrong direction. So I, I gave it a little room until just at 930. And then I actually moved to one tick above and below um, here. So um, that's kind of what you saw happening there. And then I got filled and then I hit, got my target hit. So it seems to be a winner. Um, I mean, I've gone back a couple weeks to look and I haven't seen any losers, but I know eventually we are going to get a loser. And the way that we're going to manage or the way I'm going to manage that loser is I'm going to have a max pain level of a half of, you know, let's say uh, the max loss for an Apex 50K account is I think 2,500. So we'll do 1,250 is my max pain. If I um, hit that level, I'm just going to close the trade and um, live to trade another day. I don't I don't think it makes a lot of sense to bust your account. Um and I will say for the record, I don't trade like this. I'm only doing this in Sim just to test it out. And I wanted to help, you know, I started out just trying to help the people in my community on Discord who were trying to figure it out to help them. But now it seems like, you know, there's a whole lot of people out there who really want to know what the strategy is like. Um, so um, I took this trade today. I didn't bust any accounts. Again, I think maybe that five minute candle or one, even a one minute candle is too fast, like, I think the 15 minute range prior to market open seems to be a little bit more stable. Um, you have time to plan it and enter. Um, I figured out how to set OCOs um, to somebody was kind enough to help me today. Let me get on sim here. Okay. Um, so what you have to do is right click and click OCO and then pick your strategy. And for this one, we're using the three um, OBO. I've set my target to 23 ticks and the stop to five. I might just calculate what that is going to be, how many ticks till 1250 and put that in there. Um, but basically, so we're going to set, once you right click on the um, OCO, you'll see this little green thingy come up. You have to select your strategy. And then I'm right clicking on my chart and I'm putting buy stop market order it, submitted. It entered for me. And then um, when I want to go do the sell, I literally have to go and click on to the strategy again and then right click on my chart and sell stop order market. submitted. And you see how it says three OBO two. And then I can set my my sell. Now, when I set it up, what you saw was I put the orders on my chart and I just put them really far away so I could move them in because I don't have that indicator back yet that I had that was helping me enter quickly. Order canceled. Um, I am getting that back. After every trade, I really strongly recommend just go into this empty panel, right click, hit cancel all order orders, hit right click and hit flatten everything. And then make sure you turn this off um, before you place any more orders okay so i hope that was clear practice that in sim it's easy to do without the order panel i had a hard time figuring out because i didn't realize you had to reselect the strategy even though it was the same thing that was already in there that was kind of stupid but that's how it works so that's the trick um so uh i'm gonna be busy the rest of this week I, i'm gonna have time to take the opening trade but i probably will be trading more at nighttime. to be honest this week i've got some stuff to do during the day appointments so i will be not trading by like i don't know like 10 quarter to 10 every day so i will have enough time to get this um opening uh, breakout trade done and uh, that's probably going to be about it until the end of the day so um, we'll get back to that. But anyway, so I am also working on a scalp strategy, um, something that would work that is a little more reliable for the seven tick scalp. Now one, I, I do have a setup for it in here. Um, I'm calling it three Alpine scalps. He takes three contracts for seven ticks. It's a hundred dollars per trade. 
Um, what I'm doing is entering, I'm using the volume here. So I've got the volume up and down indicator on this chart right here. Um, it's just an indicator trader indicator. I've got the zero line set up to be at a value of 210. Um, and I'm only entering trades where the volume is above that line. Okay, so that helps me avoid losers like, you know, uh, this one right here. I would have probably taken if not for the volume. But I'm using, and this is how I swing trade in a sense too. I have a like a larger brick Renko chart and I trade on Renko's usually. This one minute chart is not my typical thing here. Um, but here is my large Renko bricks. Right now this current brick is still forming. It could go green, red, it's not done yet. So I always go by the prior brick which is green. And when this brick is green, I don't take anything but long entries. Um, and when the bricks are red, I only take short entries on this chart. So that is my rule number one. I don't worry about all the other stuff on this chart. That's just for my swing trading for the purposes of this scalp. And I did um, add another uh, template to the Google Drive for this. For the purposes of scalping, all we want is this higher um, larger brick confluence. You know, the brick color just needs to be right. Don't worry about anything else on this chart. Um, so if this is a, a red brick, then a, a green brick that I'm looking for longs. And I want to take that long off of a level. So what I put on here was the trend magic indicator, which is one level. Um, the second level here is the 20 volume moving average. And then I've got the 50 on here. So off of um off of one of these moving averages, um, off of a pivot point works, um, off of volume profile levels, whatever it is that you use, you know, you see these R1, I put the pivots on here. This is the daily pivot. And here's the Fibonacci targets, R1, S1, that's resistance and support. Um, so for a long entry to be valid, you need the volume above the white line, which it was here. Um, you want price to be above the green um, trend magic. It should be green, not red. Ideally, these three lines look like this is a, a stronger trend. And then you can just enter. I mean, here's one entry. When we break the pivot high, you got an entry. You're only going for seven ticks. Your odds of not making it are very small. Um, one thing I will say is I would wait for a pullback to that midline. And I would put my stop right behind the candle. I would not make us, um, I mean, if you if you miss one or two, it's nothing. It's going to be like $100. So take the little small hit because you're going to get a lot of scalping opportunities during the day. Um, and you're not going to, you know, you're going to be done. Your goal is to make three to $500 a day. You're going to get three in the opening range trade and you maybe take one or two scalps and you're done for the account for the day. So you need to move on to either the next account or the, that's the end of your day. But like here was a good one. I know that these candles were red. We've got a red brick coming off. I mean, a red candle coming off all of those support levels. I'm sorry, this one. Um, so anyway, that's kind of how I was using it to, to do that. But. You know, you can see when we're sideways on this chart, the lines are together and the trend magic is flat. You want to probably avoid, you know, entering trades there. But to be realistic for only seven ticks, I mean, I would probably take a shot at that if it was only, like, say I entered this guy right here. It's at 65. I would enter 65, 25. My stop would be 49. I mean, it's just a couple of ticks you're going to make your target. So um, you can use that one or you could use the pivot low here. If you want to give it extra room, that's fine too. But I don't, I don't want to see anybody busting an account over a seven tick trade. I just think that's ridiculous. So anyway, I am pretty much, uh, you know, um, up here, let's see, 384 on this account and $1,395 on two days with, I mean, let's say I've gotten $600 basically on the um, opening range trade and then I've taken a couple scalps. And like I said, today was a little chaotic just because I had a lot of people reaching out to me and I was, there we go. Let's Order filled. 
Well, watch how fast it fills. It fills so fast and you get 105. But you can't risk this much money on it. It's ridiculous. You have to find a logical stop. I mean, even 810 is too much. I would probably go here, 240. That's, that's all I need. Or even if you want to be like this candle. That's it. Now I'm looking at this and I see 330 and we could bounce from 330. So I would want to have my thing at 330.25. Um, and one thing, and I this isn't really an entry. I'm just giving you an idea of how I would enter it. Um, one thing I will say is, you know, make sure that whatever you, you have a clear target in sight. Like right now we have the pivot point as our target. We know we're going to get there. Um, I'm looking over here. I see a volume profile level we're going to get to. NQ likes to get to its targets. So you want to make sure you have a target in sight and that you have enough room to get your scalp before you get there. So, I mean, it's such a small position. Um, so practice around, like play with it, I guess. I'm going to keep doing it um, and see how it goes. But I'm not personally a scalper. I don't, I wouldn't want to take this much risk on an account. Like, I don't think I need to take this much risk to make three to $400 a day. Like that's not the plan that I would want to implement, you know, I would not want to risk busting my account on like one or two trades. I mean, I'm more of a, I risk $90 to make a $400 profit type of trader. You know, I trade micros. Um, let me close this. Order filled. Uh, these are my trading charts and I trade micros. I swing trade micros. As you see, I made 294 today. I took I think I took two losers. I missed twice and then I got a winner and a half a winner. So like one winner races three losers for me. But I go in initially with a 30 tick stop and a 40 profit, but I always move it, you know, like. And then my second stop is at 80 and my third is at 200. And I break even at one to one times my risk. But. Order filled. I'm risking here, even if I kept the whole 30, which I never do, I'm risking only $91 to make, what, 140, 340. Um, and a lot of times, like I said, I move this. Generally, don't move the first target. I want to lock my 40 ticks in. It's 10 points on NQ. I consider that a scout. Um, and I also look at where my you know levels are, like... You know, like I might see this and want to be above 20. You know, again, I'm very big on the, you know, numbers that end in five and zero. So target filled. Ooh, that was a big push. Um, and if I entered, like I would have entered here, my stop would have been like here or here. I only give it two bricks. And my rank goes are like these bricks are 12 ticks. So it's three point bricks. So anyway. Here we are. I made $175 so far. I'm at break even. I can lock in some profits here. I could lock in up to 21. That should be a safe number. I'm going to come back down to this one. Well, this ended up being a nice setup for just a sim trade, just to show like what, how I trade. Um, but again, I'd only trade in the direction of the color of these bricks. Um, that's my first, you know, entry criteria. And I like to see, um, this is a MACD cross. I took the histogram off. I just have the cross. I like for the red line to be above the blue line. And for longs, the blue line should be above the red line. I've got the trend magic on here. I also have view up on here. This is a modified Keltner channel. You can use that on any platform. Um, here are the settings. I've got the offset multiplier at 0.2 and the period at 40. It's a really great, um, you know, basically ribbon. You can see how good it is. I just find that to be the best setting. Um, but in order for me to take a trade, this candle has got to be red. I need a red brick that closes below this Keltner channel and that yellow VMA. Um, and I need a target and enough room to reach it and I take my shot. I mean, I don't sit and wait all day for like perfect, perfect setups. I'm going to have a, based on just those rules, I'm going to have a lot of setups every day and I do. 
Um, and I don't, I'm not afraid to miss either. Like it's nothing to lose a trade for ninety dollars. I could lose three day, trades in a row for ninety dollars and not really care. I mean, I'm gonna make it up in one trade. My strategy is a lot more forgiving. Um, but this is a trending strategy, and I trade differently in a trading range. So. Anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there. If you're in the Discord, there are so many great traders in the Discord. We're all trading differently. Everybody has their own unique perspective. Um, you know, Vance does go in the live channel, but, you know, other people pop in um, and can pop in. And if you have something you want to share in the live, feel free. All right, so that's all I've got here. We'll let this play out. I'm curious to see if I hit my target, but I've already locked in $100. Um, I've got a runner. Let's see how it goes. I mean, I could even add on here. Um, I might, you know, consider and I've got a target to hit. No, I already hit my target. Nope. I probably, I probably would have gotten out here. Um, we're going to lock in more here because I wasn't paying attention. You know what? I'll just leave it run around. All right. So anyway, um, that's kind of where I am. I hope that was clear. I'm going to start recording my trades probably like next week. I'm a little busy this week, but I'll start recording them again um, and try to get back into the swing of things. So I have the expected daily moves for tomorrow. Um, it looks like the options market is only expecting 31 point range for ES and 138 for NQ. That looks like a trading range. Um, I plot these lines on my daily chart. Here's the sigma high and the sigma low. That's these levels here. We 90, like 2% or 96% of the time we close between those levels. And then here are the expected highs and lows with the dotted lines and like 68% of the time we close between those levels. So like today, if you were in the discord and I said, you know, we're closer to, um, the expected high, I think we'll hit it. We did. Usually whatever line we're closer to is what we hit. Now we are on an inside bar day. We could have another inside bar day. We might just go sideways here for a little bit. We have come down a lot and we generally don't just come down and go like back up. You know, we probably go a little sideways. So maybe we tick up here and trap and go down. Uh, who knows? We could come back up here. I also on my daily chart have a monthly volume profile. So the value area low for the monthly profile is all the way up here. I mean, we could come up there to retest that. I just like to know where those lines are, like I said. And here they are for ES. Same principle. Once I knew we were close to the red line, I know we're probably going to hit that. So that helps me, you know, stay on the right side of the market. Um, I also post all the volume profile levels in here. So I'll go over there real quickly. I posted these already for today. Um, here is NQ value area highest 17321. Uh, the POC is 17292. And value area low is 17, excuse me, 17166.50. Uh, we definitely have minus development up here to fill in. Let me see what the profile looks like currently. Yeah, we didn't go up. Um, we could come up back up to this line and fill in this area for sure. Um, another thing on my charts is the prior day. I just plot the prior day high, the prior day low, and the current, I mean, the daily open and the, Stop filled. the New York session open is what I put on my charts. All right, here I am. I made $150. I didn't have to sweat it. Um, I risked 90 bucks. If I lost, so what? You know, I'll just take another trade. But when you're doing that scalp stuff, that's not the way it goes. You know, one one trade is a $1,200, at least a $1,200 loss possibly is going to bust your account. I just don't think that's a smart way to trade. I think the Alpine trader... And I, I, I think somebody gave him this idea. I don't think it's something he came up with on his own. But the whole idea of, you know, getting each account to three to five hundred dollars and moving on to the next and leaving it alone till you get to pay out is a great plan. Not using the copier is a great plan. And I think that's where the disconnect has been for a lot of other people. So I think he's smart in that regard. And I think you could do that follow the alpine model per se and not be as risky is is what i would recommend 
All right, so off my soap soapbox here. Um, all right, let's go to NQ. I mean ES. All right, value area high is sitting at 5046. The POC is at 5029. The value area low is at 5006. We've got a naked POC at 29 and 03. I think we might come down and get those guys. We are already moving down. I took the candles off of this chart um, just so I could read the profiles better. Let me pull this over here. We've already started to move down into um, into the value area. So we could just cross below value area low. Odds are we're gonna make a rotation. Um, and, that, and that is we come into value area and we pull back and then we continue down to target one is the POC and target two is the um, value area low. And this is how I trade trading ranges. And then I wait for us to break below it and come back into value area and pull back. And we usually always pull back to take out the stops and then I take the long up to, you know, I front run the POC, I would probably get out at like 26 and then I would take it back up to value area high and then I would have a runner maybe up to the prior day high. Um, and I just go back and forth, you know, all day. And if you have like, you know, a 15 to 20 point volume profile range and you go back and forth twice a day, that's, that's a nice lot of points you can catch. All right, so this is my line for the daily open right here. It's sitting at 17352.25. The daily open is this candle that just opened at 6 p.m. Eastern time tonight. It's a red candle, so we get it from the body at the top. And if the candle was green, we would get it at the body from the bottom. Um, I plot that line. We, we definitely test it a lot. And uh, one of the first signs I would say you're in a trading range is that we've tested it. The, the daily open you know if we open in the morning we come back to it to the new york open and then especially if we come back to the daily open we are probably in a range i like this orenco i have this is an orenco bar chart it's just a different kind of renko bar i've got it set at 32 180 and uh, 80 and 160 and this is the full day picture and i could see the full day picture it's very clean It looked like that for me today. Um, it's very clean. I can see which direction we're going in. And I'm pretty confident as long as I trade in the direction of these candles. They're, they're, they're very large bricks, so they encompass a lot of, a lot of points. I'm going to be going in the right direction. So um, I think I covered everything I wanted to cover today. I will definitely start um, recording my trades. Uh, I definitely would encourage you to spend time in the Discord especially watch Vance. He's got a really cool trading strategy. Um, Trader Ed will be popping in to, uh, to Pac-Man up all the points too. But anyway, I just wanted to say um, I really appreciate you guys and you had me cracking up today. I hope everyone had a great day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.